Michigan. Hi there. Come on in. Tonight we have a great Michigan outdoor show lined up for you. We're going to go after the wolf of the water, the northern pike. There's all kinds of ways to catch northern pike using bait, bobbers. That's, that's one of the most fun ways. Also on spinner baits, we're going to show you some big pike that Bob Garner caught. We have a recipe for Sheila's Pike Pie. Now, actually, we snuck some walleye into this, but it is absolutely tremendous. Bob Garner is going to tell us about some of the new things he has coming up for the Sporting Dog Show at the Outdoor Fair and a lot more. So stick around. I'm Fred Trost. It's Thursday night. Time for Michigan Outdoors. Northern pike are a popular fish with ice anglers because they're relatively easy to catch. They're a sucker for a sucker minnow or a big shiner. And when they grab it, they usually run. And in 30 seconds or a minute, they usually turn it around in their mouth and swallow it. Because they're not terribly sensitive to hooks and leaders, they strip line from a tip up and the fisherman has a chance to set the hook when the pike stops to swallow the bait. The flag trips when a pike pulls out line. Well, Is it moving? moving. No, but I'll tell you what. I can see right now. I forget. Oh yeah, there it goes. Yep. Oh yeah. Okay. Is that a good one? Well, I don't know about a good one, but there's a pikey. Oh! Whoa! Whoa! The intriguing thing about pike is their fight. They just don't give up. Okay. In the summer, you can catch northern pike a variety of ways, and a favorite is a twister tail on a spinner bait. Now, even without a twister tail, pike dart from the weeds to grab it. Pike are shallow water fish, three to five feet, often preferred. They lay in wait to ambush smaller fish. Ha! Look at that. Which they do with a short burst of speed. You saw it right here. It attacks this spinner bait with a quick sprint. Now that's a common characteristic of northern pike, the short burst of speed, especially when they get near the boat. Oh, look at that. <laughs> oh, that little skunk. <laughs> that was great. That was great. Why, you little son of a gun, you? On ultralight. Boy, he can't. <laughs> there he goes. Easy come, easy go. Now let me show you a few ways to rig a minnow for pike. Now you saw the treble hook through the back for winter tip-up fishing. In the summer, big minnows or small suckers are a popular bait with pike because they're feeding every day. In the winter, they feed less often and don't tend to eat as much, so smaller minnows work well in the winter. Single hooks, well, they work just as well as a treble, at least in my book, as long as you give the pike time to swallow the bait. You hook it lightly under the dorsal fin. This way the minnow isn't impaired. It can swim freely. It'll last for hours on a hook. Of course, who wants it to last for hours? A sinker about a foot from the leader is okay. And we're using a wire leader here because of pike's sharp teeth when they swallow the bait. Dick Blau casts a small minnow and jig for walleye while I get that big slip bobber rig set up for a pike. Line slides through the slip bobber, but you tie a, a slip knot or crimp a stopper on your line to set the depth. On the video graph, we see something substantial on the bottom. Could be a big pike, could be a school of perch. I drop a line down to the bottom with a small minnow, hoping for walleye or perch while my big minnow is floating under the bobber trying to attract a big pike. Look, I just got a little perch. Dick was fishing with the same type of rig, but his fish was much bigger than a perch. Maybe a walleye. Oh, that got to be a pike the way that's acting. I got him on my light rod. I know that. Oh, that must Oh, there he goes. All right. <laughs> that's what we're here for. Remember I told you how a pike likes to dart? Well, keep oh, that in mind when you net one. I didn't keep that in mind right here. Yeah, let's see. Let me get your net. Here we go. Here's the laziest netting job I've ever done. <laughs> I did several things wrong. First of all, plunging the net into the water, that startled the pike. Right there, the stab and the pike darts away. 
I got another chance to do it the right way. You want the pike coming towards the net, being pulled by the angler, hopefully with its head up. You want to hold the bag of the net in your hand and ease it into the water, then scoop. There we go. There, there we go. Success. That is, you caught that on the jig? No, you yeah. Yeah, I just put pink jig and a minnow. A minnow on there. Big fish, big bait, not usually. Now That's this one great. came across a small walleye minnow That's and scarfed great. it up. Well, you caught him right in the corner of the mouth with that little jig. No way look, at that, look at how that straightened out that hook. <laughs> yeah. We didn't have uh, too long to go on that. But there is a place for big bait. That's when you know you have big pike in the area. Now, this is a sucker. We'll hook through the lips with a weedless hook. With this rig, don't set the hook too early. He's nice Let's see, where's the net? Where's the net? I remember the oh, hooks good. in the sucker's mouth and pike grab bait from behind. Whoa. That's what happens when you don't give the pike time to swallow it, especially with a weedless hook. Remember how Chris Hickson set the hook? Well, the hook wasn't actually set. The pike was stubborn though and played tug of war with Chris, at least for a moment. Then it let it go. Did you see the size of that pike? He just had that by the... What did he have Did you by? see the size of that pike? No, I didn't. As a matter of fact. Oh. Br bring oh, that chub here. No. Bring the chub here. Let's take a look at this and see where the heck... Because he obviously didn't have the hook. Oh. Look, he... Sometimes it's easier to fish with a bobber and watch it move to let you know when to set the hook. Now here's a red Whoa. flash underwater. That's Bob Very Garner's cool. bobber being towed by a big northern pike. Bob had a good one on, so we pulled in our other bobber that was setting out there a ways, gave this pike some room because it was full of fight. Look at this, look at this baby shag, gang. Look at this. Back and get, get oh, a shot he's a nice one. He's a nice one. Good momentum, head up and into the net. Chris Hickson lifts it out of the water, but it's not done fighting. Ooh, yeah! Oh, wow. yes, sir. All right, all right. How thank about you. that? <laughs> well, that northern pike cooperated, but even when they don't, they're fun to catch. Good job there, Bob. Thank you, gang. All right, eh? <laughs> northern pike, you can catch them. Try it this summer in Michigan outdoors. Here's a 29-inch Muskegon Lake walleye that Randy Hughes of Hastings caught trolling. Greg Sharpings of Grand Blanc's 36-inch carp weighed 31 and a half pounds. Donald McGee's of Fraser had a monster Lake St. Clair muskie, also 31 and a half pounds. Now that's a pound and four ounce Montcalm County bluegill that was caught by Greg Parsons of Crystal. Matt Schick's 10 point was taken in Menominee County. Wilbert Rahala of Brighton took this bruiser 14 point buck in the Upper Peninsula. And here's a nice bird with a 10 and a half inch beard and a nice picture of Wes Kitchen of Grand Blank who called it in. John Copeland of Owasso has, well, quite a buck. It's a big 10 point. The story started in Van Buren County with the fact that he only had two hours before he had to make a plane. Still, his brother talked him into a quick hunt. And here, as they say, is the rest of the story. My brother says, well, my boy and I will we'll get over here and you go down there and hit a ditch. And when you hit the ditch, turn around and go the other way. So, so I just kind of looked off and saw my brother and his nephew, or my, my nephew going one way, and I started walking the other way, and as I was looking back from them, I, I saw this thing stand in the woods, and I thought, oh my gosh, there, here's, you know, it's a deer, it's a big deer, and then I saw the rack. And uh, this guy took off, and I put a slug through his neck at 50 yards with a shotgun. Did you make the plane? Uh, believe it or not, we, <laughs> we made the plane. We had 10 minutes to spare. For combining a good shot, a close call, and a trophy buck, you deserve John Copeland to be our Michigan Outdoors Trophy Deer Hunter of the Week.
The Natural Resources Commission has set new rules for guided bear hunts on public lands. The rules are too numerous to mention here, but numbers of baits and seasons have been changed drastically from last year. The DNR Fish Division needs some help from anglers who catch tagged Atlantic salmon. They're asking that all tags, along with information on the size, condition, and location of where the fish were caught, be forwarded to the Fish Division. It looks like several more Michigan counties will be open to quail hunting this year. This final surveys are not completed yet, but the mild winter has boosted quail numbers. And it should be a banner year for mosquitoes, according to a health department spokesperson. Recent rains have left a lot of pools of stagnant water for mosquito breeding. More public land in southern Michigan will be open for this September's early goose season. More hunters should have a place to hunt. And a compromise has been hammered out between conservation officers and the state, averting at the last minute a crisis that could have left fish and wildlife virtually unprotected. I spent a day last week with several state legislators researching the walleye fishing in Lake Erie. Now some of you might call it a junket, but not me. There are so many lessons to be learned and too much information to be gained by taking the politicians fishing. They're the ones who cast the votes in many cases that set the size limits and tell you what are legally acceptable fishing techniques. More importantly, they're also the folks who set pollution limits on industry they decide how clean the water should be. Now, if you don't think that matters much, you probably don't know about Lake Erie. 20 years ago, it was declared dead by most folks, but a combination of anglers working with elected officials got Erie cleaned up to the point where it is today, where it's loaded with healthy, good-tasting walleyes. Now, we all know that when we take our kids fishing, we're guaranteeing the future of fishing. But by taking the politicians fishing, we might very well be guaranteeing the future of clean water and its best byproduct, an excellent fishery. And Lake Erie is a great example. The common opossum is the only mammal in North America that carries its young in a pouch like a kangaroo. What other distinction separates opossums from other North American mammals? Opossums have 50 teeth, more than any other North American mammal. Bob Garner has held back one of the greatest events we have coming up, uh, maybe of all times at the outdoor fair. Oh, the, 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 the hunting dog show. And essentially, we have more than hunting dogs coming, but the hunting dog show is going to be uh, fantastic this well, year. Well, as people watch the show mm -hmm. over the years they see every fall we go out and we're using setters and springers and pointers and retrievers and beagles and we decided to incorporate these dogs into a show and it's been growing every year last year you took a couple steps with it and oh. held some events right and we had warren cahoon came over from the bourbon barrel and we showed pointing dogs mm -hmm. actually pointing and uh, and also retrieving then there were retriever shows this year we've got a dog trainer who is a an excellent field trialer, been in the business for 30 years, Jerry Dealey coming from Wayne County with his English pointers. Okay, and English pointers. They have short hair, very long short. tails. Long ta very stylish, very mm -hmm. stylish dogs. And his dogs are, are really broke, point broke to the, they're just absolutely beautiful to watch. They're so staunch. But also Jerry knows all the little tricks of the trade which he's going to be able to tell people and how they can get their dogs to do essentially the same thing. Okay, now that takes care of the English pointers. What That's else do you have coming? The, the point is, we also have the Hunting Retriever Club is bringing in all sorts of retrievers, Labrador Retrievers, Goldens, uh, to, uh, to show retriever training. And they're kind of an interesting club too. They do a lot of field trial, but what they do is they try to bring the most out in each individual dog. It's not a real competitive sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And Bob Steiner will be there, who is, uh, who is one of the Midwest field reps, and he'll, uh, he'll do a half-hour show on how to train uh, retrievers. Plus, you'll see some real fun stuff, too. Now, the, the footage that we were just seeing here was the retrievers down on the lake right. that, that the Michigan duck hunters have done for a number of years. Right. So how are they going to work with the retrievers? on the, the athletic field. Oh, well, that's that's the neat thing about this year. They'll uh, they'll be able to put uh, put dummies uh, around, scatter them around, direct the dogs to them, mm -hmm. kind of the blind retrieves. 
But the most important thing is, is they're going to be able to show folks how they can take their own retriever and get some, get to see some actual benefits of training right away. And that's, that's going to be a fun time. Well, the bird dogs, the setters, pointers, retrievers, are, are, are always get a lot of attention. Bob Garner has his favorite type of dog. Well, with a show this year, the Beagles. George Perman is going to bring uh, is going to bring Beagles on Saturday and Sunday. We're working on a, we're working on Friday right now with uh, with some other folks in the Beagle clubs. And essentially, he's going to be able to talk about the three or four different types of Beagles and competitions, and make suggestions as to what type of Beagles rabbit hunters should have, depending mm -hmm. on whether they hunt snowshoes or cottontails. Show a little bit about the training. They'll show what a good Beagle there, looks there's like. There's not much to show about training in Beagles. Well, there, there? there's more than you think. In <laughs> fact, in fact, I think we're all going to be able to learn something from that. Plus, the sled I dogs are going to be I wonder if the Beagles there. will learn anything. <laughs> Anybody who's had Beagles knows exactly what I'm talking about. Talking about, and you have the sled and dogs. And the sled dogs will be there. Uh, uh, Marty Williams and Dwayne and Judy Bennett will be there again. They'll have an actual rig that they'll they'll uh, that they'll put the dogs in harness, and they'll go around the track. and And there's a lot more to sled dogs than meets the eye. There are even teams of poodles, mm -hmm. believe it or not. Teams of Siberian Huskies, Labrador Retrievers. This is going to be a lot of fun. And there should be puppies. Most of these groups puppies, are bringing yep. some puppies too. Puppies will be great to see. A big attraction for the Sporting Dog Show, greatly expanded, coming up at the Lots Outdoor of fun. Fair. We also have a big expanded art show, wildlife art show, Bob, over at the Junior High. I hope I get a chance to see it. All you have to do is go a few steps west of the Muzzleloaders Village into the Junior High, and you'll see an array of wildlife artists, carvers, photographers with displays of their work, collections of wildlife art, a display by the Michigan Taxidermist Association of award-winning mounts and dioramas, including fish decoys. You know, we've always had wildlife art represented at the outdoor fair, but not to the extent you'll find it this year. We're giving special deals to artists, taxidermists, and carvers, by the way, to build up this expo, so give us a call if you're an artist and would like to exhibit. Heiner Hertling, who painted Daybreak, our 1989 PBS limited edition print, will be there offering custom remarks. So bring your Daybreak print to the fair, talk to him about it. He'll also participate in an on-stage seminar on wildlife art. When I see something out in nature that strikes me as very beautiful and I have the impulse to put it on canvas or photograph it, maybe a little bit overdone to explain to other people who don't pay attention to subtleties as much as I do because I've been trained to do it, to explain to them, hey, it's beautiful out here. It's, look what the frost does to the grass. Look what the sun does on the, on the branches. And so when I emphasize something, it's, it's trying to get it across what struck me mm -hmm. as beautiful. And another beautiful sight at the fair will be the bionic buck, taking on not only the hopes of hot shot archers and dashing them, but taking their arrows and dashing them to bits. Beautiful. Bring extra arrows to the fair. For each arrow you put through the bionic bucket, ticket with your name on it will go into a drawing for a $250 champion compound bow by Amer American Archery, a hunt which we'll announce next week, and a resort weekend at Houghton Lake. Three winners in all. Now, if you miss the hole and smash your arrow, your ticket will go into a drawing where 20 prizes will be awarded. 10 weekend buffet dinners at Coyle's Restaurant at Houghton Lake, and 10 dozen arrows from Easton Aluminum ordered to the winner's specifications. And the crowd will love watching no matter where your arrow lands. Next week, I'll fill you in on the final details of our Outdoor Fair 1989. Oh, beautiful! Sheila Klingen has sent us her recipe for pike pie. Hmm. And pie really doesn't describe it. It's more like a quiche when it all comes out. And there's pike. Oh, well, yeah, pike. That doesn't really... Dis that's walleye, <laughs> yeah. Kathy Beitler. It and is. Walleye. And it's a very good substitute for this recipe. And just going to put your pats of butter on and put it in the oven because you do want your fish cooked thoroughly here. How if long you, do you cook it when you put it in the oven like 20, that? 20, 25 minutes. Now, hmm. if you had leftover fish, it would be perfect to use in this recipe. And then you can make a batter out of bisquick and milk and seasoned pepper. And this is a regular quiche batter. And it just goes through and after it's in... All the fish and everything just kind of mixes it up and holds it all together. Mm -hmm. And you want to mix it thoroughly with the mixer and then just set it aside while you add your other ingredients. 
You're going to add onions to the fish. Now, here's your fish all flaked and in the pie plate. It's a good idea to flake it like that because all the bones will be going. You can pick those out for people right. who are concerned about that. And then add broccoli. And mm -hmm. you could use fresh this time. It would be perfect. And your dollops of cheese whiz. Mm. And then your batter goes on top and just bake it in the oven. And Sounds it just kind of mixes tasty. all through. So you pour that on the top. And how yep. long does it uh, stay in the oven? About a half hour. Hmm. And then it comes out like, like pie. Mm-hmm, like a quiche. I wonder who that would appeal to. If we told a Mr. Garner that we're having pie... It's perfect. Second back to Streisand, I can figure to go pike fishing. You know, pike's been my favorite fish to catch uh -huh. for years. Mm -hmm. this, is, this makes it all worthwhile when you can eat it like this. Mm. This is probably the best pike recipe that I've ever tasted. Well, now, I have a question, though. What? Kath said that she got walleye pike mm -hmm. for this. She got... Of that term walleye logic, instead which means of, it's walleye instead of pike. pike. Mm -hmm. That may be the may be the reason why this is the best <laughs> pike I've ever <laughs> No, pike is good. I think pike's as good as walleye anytime. Yeah, it anyway. comes from the cold, clear waters. But mm -hmm. man, this recipe on its own, you I think, with about any it. kind of yeah. fish. Oh yeah. This is Perch, I can, the sandwich, onions anything. And, mm. Veggies and don't equate it with quiche. This is better than any <laughs> quiche. If that recipe. The thing that's influenced our guide report the most the past few days and this past weekend has been a lot of water, a lot of wind, rivers are high in the Upper Peninsula, but the bluegills are on their beds all the way up to the Upper Peninsula. Seven to ten inch limits on the western end of the UP. The wind has slowed the walleye down in Manuskong Bay. They're getting a couple of them, three pounders, getting a couple walleye in the Alpena area. Uh, Holton Lake reports some good bluegill fishing, 8 to 10 inches. They're getting 15 to 20, but only a couple walleye. Biggest perch runs in three years around the Charlevoix area. 8 to 9 inch perch off of Pentwater, according to Coho Bob. They're getting a few perch, maybe a dozen, off of the pier at South Haven, 8 to 9 inches. Uh, 4 to 6 walleye in the Detroit River running about 2 pounds, and they're still having good catches of silver bass off Caseville. Getting 50 perch, fairly easy, 8 to 10 inches. A lot of alewives off of Oscoda, where they are picking up a couple walleye up to 6 pounds. Take a look at our salmon and trout report. Well, in the Upper Peninsula, it's uh, a little slow. One to two kings, one to two lake trout. And as I uh, mentioned before, the streams are over the banks up there due to all that water. Browns and Lakers, limits around Charlevoix. In fact, all over the state, Limits of lake trout, a couple salmon in most areas, although Emil Dean has been slamming them off of Manistee, seven to eight kings, and the biggest lake trout seem to be coming off of uh, oh, the southwest portion of the state in 180 to 210 feet of water. Hey, take a look at this. A late report. Remember last week I said easy limits on Lakers, Auburn Hills, season's closed. Way to go, Pistons. Get outdoors if you can this weekend. It's a great place to be. See you next week. I hope you noticed the new underwriter credit this week on Michigan Outdoors. Welcome back to Auto Owners Insurance Company. We sure appreciate their support. Next week on Michigan Outdoors, we are going to talk about the outdoor fair just before it happens at Houghton Lake. So join us for an interesting show, lots of action, next week right here on Public Television. Good boy. Good boy. <laughs>